right, everybody. Let's do IXL 7th grade AA10. Go to learning. Make sure you are on math. Go to 7th grade. And then go down to AA10, which is volume of cylinders. Before we do that, as usual, we are going to check out the reference pages on Friedman Math. I'm already on the right page, actually, but just to show you, uh, volume is on page 12. So if we scroll down to page 12, here it is again, page 12. Volume is in this section over here, and volume refers to the number of cubic units, which is literally cubes, which are one unit long on each edge that can fit inside of an object. So that's what we're asking ourselves when we ask, what is the volume of such and such object? It's how many little cubes can fit inside of it where each cube is one inch long, one inch wide, and one inch high. And for, a, for any prism, the uh, formula for volume is very simple. It's just the area of the base times the height. And when we say height, what we really mean is the side of the prism which is perpendicular to the base that is forming a 90 degree angle to the base. So here are some examples of prisms. A couple of these we did in uh, the last two videos. So we have a rectangular prism. So we would find the area of the base which is a rectangle. So you just do the length times the width and multiply that by the height and that would give you the volume. We have a triangular prism where the base is a triangle. So to do that, you would find the area of the base, which is one half times the length times the height of the triangle, or length times height divided by two, times the height of the prism. That would give you the volume. What we're going to talk about today in this video is the volume of a cylinder, which is technically not a prism. Because to be a, a prism, technically the sides have to be rectangles. And you can see even in the triangular prism, uh, whereas the base is a triangle, uh, both bases, the bottom base and the top base, are triangles. All of the other sides of the prism are rectangles. So a cylinder is technically not a prism because it doesn't have rectangular sides. But I have it here lumped together with the other prisms because the way that you calculate the volume for it is exactly the same. You find the area of the base, which in this for a cylinder, the base is a circle, and we to find the area of a circle, we would do, it's up here actually on page 12, the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r stands for the radius. So once you find the area of the, it's, how do I get that back to where it was? Okay, I don't know if I can. Anyway, once you find the area of the circular base using pi r squared, then you can just multiply it by the height to find the volume of that cylinder, which again means how many little cubes are able to fit inside of the cylinder. So the formula is exactly the same as the other prisms, uh, so that's why I have it in the same section. Okay, so let's go back to IXL and do some problems. First problem here, 
what is the volume of this cylinder? So we are going to first write our volume formula, which is the volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. So we are looking for volume. We don't know it. So the V will stay as a V. We'll just, will still be a V. Uh, the base now, remember, is a circle. I know it looks like an oval, but that's just because when you draw a circle that's tilted on its side in three-dimensional space, it tends to look like an oval. But this is a circle here. So the, vol the area of a circle is pi r squared. And we still have this h over here because this is all inside of the volume formula. Now the volume of this circle, IXL is telling us, is six yards. Did I say the volume? The radius of this circle is six yards. So let's plug that in for r. So now we have v equals pi. You know what, let's go ahead and plug the pi in also. So we want to use 3.14 for pi. So we'll put 3.14 over here. The radius is six. And don't forget the exponent of two above the six also. And then we have to multiply all of that by the height of the cylinder, which happens in this problem to also be six yards. The radius and the height are not always going to be the same. They just happen to be the same for this problem. So six to the second power or six squared means six times six, which is 36. So we have V equals 3.14 times 36 times six. Now we'll just plug all that in. 3.14 times 36 times six equals 678.24. Okay, now we are being told in this problem to round to the nearest hundredth, but this four, the last digit that we have, which is the four, is already in the hundredths place, and we don't have anything after that. So we really don't have to do any rounding in this problem. Our answer already is in the form that IXL wants it in. So we'll just type that in, 678.24, okay? What is the volume of this cylinder? Again, round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Um, okay, so this problem is the same as the last one. Volume is equal to the area of the base times the height volume is equal to pi r squared because our base is a circle times the height of the cylinder volume is equal to 3.14 times 7 squared times 4. now you have to be careful sometimes with the radius in this case, the dotted line was from the middle out to the circumference of the circle. So that's good. So that means that this seven is actually the radius. Sometimes IXL will give you a problem where the line goes all the way across, and then it's telling you the diameter, and you would have to cut it in half. You would have to divide it by two to find the radius but they didn't do that, that this time. They just gave us the radius, so we can plug that in. And now seven to the second power. Remember your order of operations. So you're going to do exponents before you do multiplication. 
So you're not going to do 3.14 times 7 first. You're going to do 7 to the second power, which means 7 times 7, which is 49. Do that first. So we have V equals 3.14 times 49 times 4. And now we can plug all of this in to the calculator. I, of course, am going to do it in my head. I'm just showing you what to put in the calculator in case you need to use it. Do you believe me? Do you believe I did that all in my head? Okay, ready? I'm going to tell you the answer even before I hit equals. You ready? 615.44, you see? I told you before I hit equals. So that proves that I did it all in my head. Okay, so that's our answer here. V equals 615.44. And again, this is already in the hundredths place. The last digit that we have is already in the hundredths place. There's nothing after that. So we don't have to do any rounding in this problem. So we'll just leave it like that. What is the volume of this cylinder? Okay, so this problem is almost the same as the other problems. The only difference is like I told you a few minutes ago, for this problem, you have to be very careful. IXL is telling you that the length from here all the way to the other side is eight centimeters. So that means that the diameter, let me just remind everybody what a diameter and a radius is. Which page was that on? That was on circles. Where is circles? Page 13. I went the wrong way. Remember, the diameter is from one end all the way to the other. The radius is only from the center to, to the exterior of the circle. So the diameter is twice as big as the radius. Or another way of saying that, the radius is half as big as the diameter. So if IXL is giving us the diameter, then we need to cut it in half or divide by 2 to find the radius. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we are going to put 4 in here for the radius, right? 8 divided by 2. equals 4. And the rest of this is exactly the same as the other problems. The height is 7. 4 to the second power, meaning 4 times 4, is 16. And let's finish it up now. Three hundred fifty one point six eight. Okay. Um, this one is the same as the last one, so we're going to skip ahead to the next level. Okay. So this problem looks the same as the, the last problem we did. And it is pretty much the same. The only difference is at the end of this problem, we are actually going to have to round to the nearest hundredth. Because I see a decimal in here. And this decimal combined with this decimal, which is two decimal places out, is going to give us an answer, which is three decimal places out. And then we're going to have to round that to the nearest hundredth, you know, back to two decimal places out. So let's quickly get to the end because we've done we've done this before. Air, the volume of any prism, and I'm including a, a cylinder in that 
definition is equal to the area of the base times the height. The area of the base is a circle, so we're going to use pi r squared to find the area of that circle. The volume is what we're looking for, so that stays a v. Pi is 3.14. The radius here is going to be, uh, what's that going to be? 33 divided by 33.4 divided by 2. I should be able to do that in my head, but I'm hungry. So I'll, I'll use that as my excuse for using the calculator. 16.7. Oh, no, I lied. This is, this is not going to be... Oh. I think we're actually going to get four decimal places out when we multiply all of this because we're squaring this number. Okay, times the height, which is nine. I hope it's clear how we got that 16.7. We took 33.4 and we divided it by two because this was the diameter but we didn't really want the diameter. We wanted the radius, r, which is only halfway. So that's why we had to divide it by 2 to get 16.7. OK, so, so we have 16.7 squared, which means 16.7 times another 16.7 is 278.89. All right, did I copy that correctly? Yes. Okay, and then, oh, we're up, so we're up to the last step, right? So just multiply all this out. So you see our answer is four decimal places out. We want to round to the nearest hundredth. So we need to cut this down to two decimal places out. Okay, so what we are rounding to, the digit that's in the hundredths place is the four. And the digit that we're using to make our decision is a three. So remember, if the decision digit is a zero, one, two, three, or four, then the rounding, oh, I'm, so, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. This, no, the three is the rounding digit and the one is the decision digit. So the three is in the hundredths place and the one is the digit that we're going to use to make our decision. So if the decision digit is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then the rounding digit stays the same. If the decision digit is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, then the rounding digit gets bumped up by 1. So really, when we're rounding, the question that we're asking ourselves is, is this number closer to this to this number or is it closer to this number okay so that's the idea behind rounding if this digit is a zero one two three or four then it means that this number is actually closer to this than to this. So that's why we would keep this digit the same. If the decision digit is a 6, 7, 8, or 9, then that means that this number is actually closer to this number than it is to this number. 
So that's why we would bump this digit up by one, and in this case, to get the four. Um, if the decision digit is a five, then technically this number would be exactly halfway between this number and this number, but traditionally you still would round up and bump that up to the, you know, just add one to the rounding digit. So if you need a, a bit of a review on rounding and place value, you can go to the reference pages and look at page one. And right over here, you see place value and over here you see rounding. So just look over there, okay? So anyway, uh, what did we say? Our answer, so this is a one, so this is going to stay the same. So we're gonna round this digit to this. We're gonna round this number to this, and we're gonna type that in. So 7,881.43. Good work. Okay, this problem is exactly the same as the last one. It's another rounding problem. Um, in this case, so this would get squared and then times this and times this. So our, our answer would end up being five decimal places out. So we would have to round it back to the hundredths place. I'm going to go ahead and jump a level. Let's see if we get something different. Let's see if they ask us for the height or the radius. Yeah, okay. So this time we are given the volume and we have to figure out what the height is. So this problem is a little bit different than the other ones, but we're gonna start the same way. We're going to write that the volume is equal to the area of the base times the height, which is, since our base is a circle, we have pi r squared times the height of the prism and then let's plug in what we know. We actually do know the volume for this one. It is 1,130.4 cubic inches. We're going to use 3.14 as our approximation for pi. Our radius, so this dotted line that IXL gave us is only going halfway, which is good. So that tells us that this six inches here is actually the radius. We don't have to cut it in half. So we'll plug in the six over here and then square that times the height. So now we're just going to solve this equation for H. So the first thing to do is six to the second power, which is 36. So we have 1,130.4 equals 3.14 times 36 times the height of h. And now we have 3.14 times 36. One hundred thirteen point zero four. Our last step is going to be to divide both sides by 113.04. And, oh, well, that's just going to give us 10, isn't it? Okay, so the height is equal to 10. That it's... What, it's not very hard to divide this by this in your head because you notice that um, this number times 10, you, where we would just move the decimal place one space to the right, would give you this number. So that means that if we divide this number into this number, we'll get uh, 10 as the answer. So. But if you want, you know, you could use a calculator and just do 
0.4 divided by 113.04, and you see you get 10 there. Okay. All right, this problem is the same as the last one. Um, I will do this problem and then we'll see if IXL gives us anything different. If not, then I'll end the video. So we have the volume. Let me skip ahead a little bit. So the volume is going to be 3.14 times the radius. So it gave us the radius, not the diameter. So that's good. So we can just plug that in for the radius squared times the height, which is what we're looking for. And actually, the volume is 11,253.76. So we get times 3 point equals 3.14 times 16 squared. Oh my God, I should know this, but I'm, I got to work on my squares. Okay, 256. 256 times h, okay? And then we do 256 times 3.14, 803.84. Okay, the last step is to divide both sides by 803. Point eight four All right. Oh. Equals fourteen. Okay, so the height of this cylinder would be 14 yards. Okay, so it's giving me another question that's exactly the same. So I'm going to end the video there. Please reach out to me if you have questions about anything and have a great day.